seeing it? Oh, Everything good? Yeah. All good, all good. All right, cool. Yeah, so I like W starts so that you can come into land and just usually with the W with the attack speed, you could just auto these minions really easily. Um, mm -hmm. As well as if you do, the movement speed is really nice for sp getting into the range of him real quick and out, or okay. especially other range of the cures. Um, they're already kind of in the lane, so it's a little bit hard for you to get proud at this point, but it's 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 nice in a lot of spots. But also you'll get to lane quicker because you'll have the W <laughs> speed. Yeah. Um, but it's nice because you could come in like if, if he's not pressuring you to already come in way for you know distance from Nami. If Nami's up here, we come in down here like he did. And then if we have a chance, we can auto minions pretty quickly. And you press the attack, so if you have the chance with your W, you can get it pretty quickly on him. Lucian, you gotta be afraid of because he's got the Q into the passive auto, so he can return damage fast. But champions that don't really have abilities level one and just also rely on auto attacks, misfortune does really well with your W start mm -hmm. to them too, because you can just obviously the attack speed gives you that press the attack proc pretty quick. So champions that kind of come into mind would be like Zaya, doesn't really have much damage level one with her Q. Also, you have longer range than her. Um, Caitlyn, you can't really get in range of. Varus isn't. Uh, he's got his E, but you can kind of be a, away from that. Just usually, like you're not trying to necessarily use the W to trade onto them, but you can just get the wave prowl for the slow push yeah. really, really quickly, which is like the stuff we talked about before. And then you can pressure them really well. <clears throat> I think we just eat a few Lucian Qs, which is you know you kind of correct that a little bit later, start mm -hmm. positioning a little bit better into him. For Lucian's, you know, if Lucian's walking down here, we probably walk also want to walk down here, right? And then he's gonna bounce up here, and we're gonna bounce up too. Just again, similar like what we talked about before with fiddlesticks, we do have to be aware of where Nami is because if Nami's down or up here and we're trying to get away from him by going up here or something, we might end up in her range. So, we, you know, if Nami's pressuring us a lot, we might need to just step off the gas on the wave and kind of come back a little mm -hmm. bit, right? Um, that was close. No, there's too much. Yeah, they're level two also there at that point. So, you know, this minion, third melee minion is always going to be level two. So I think what you did to this hit, this minion is fine. I think we just lay off of it now and just wait. Because you know they're going to get level two and Lucian's going to get dash. Most champions will have a lot of power at this point. And this minion's at a good amount of HP for if it does, when it comes into tower, tower's going to put it at last hit range. Mm -hmm. If if we auto it a couple times more and it gets down to this point, right? And it's now we can't, shot. we get zoned off level two. Yeah, it's not going to be able, we're not going to be able to get it. So I think we did a good job prepping it for that and then just just lay off a little bit, let, it, let, let them crash it. So we avoid, you know, th the stuff that hurts is actually like just either way this wave's coming into you by, at this point, right? Yeah. We're, we're losing lane. We're losing the first few we're not necessarily losing lane but we're behind the first few waves we've gotten every minion on the first wave which is great but we want to stay healthy now we don't want them to use this level two so even if you know this if, if this is an, another champion who doesn't have a dash it's fine that you're trying to like hit this but if you know it depends on how they're positioned but you really just want to play for your hp right now so that now you're not at this point where you're playing <sighs> really really low hp and this is just a, a really really common mistake around this rank it's just like being greedy to hit Oh, There's not even a reason to hit this minion right now. Yeah. It's coming in. All you're doing is risking HP for like actually nothing at that point. Unless you're trying to really like hold the wave out, which at the, like right now you could start auto for auto for auto on minions trying to thin the wave out, but they are still in the slow push, so you'll still have to respect it. Like once once they're gonna hit level two, you do just hundred percent respect that. <clears throat> Where was that? Was that? Did we get bubbles when they were level two? Yeah, we did, because Nami, mm. duh, she didn't have bubble at level one. I don't think, at least. She should have a W. Yeah, Lucian got a lot of poke on us. Nice that we have a sustained support, though, so we don't get <laughs> totally... Murdered. Yeah, murdered off this. So, so what are you doing if you're Lucian right now? You hit level... Oh, no, Lucian wants to be taking even trades, because I'll die before he will. Right. Well, well, sure, but what are you gonna do with the wave if you're Lucian right now? Oh, crash it so it can bounce back into me. Well, I guess the next wave is really close, but he uh, could. Okay. Maybe... Well, you, you... yeah, yeah, uh, you're you're on the right track. Maybe he like uh, break checks I it. I should have said. I should I should have said from here. What are you doing if you're Lucian now? Not touching the wave, right? Not. Yeah. Let that shit come into you, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Nami's kind of low, but she can heal up. She's got a health pot ticking even. He he can just play slow, let this wave push into him if he just doesn't auto these minions from the start. Like, he, just already from here, this is a new wave. It's separate yeah, into turret. Sick. It's going to slow push in. He can just play slow. He could just bounce out and get a ward right down. down. 
he can he there's a lot of options it's way better if it's wave three that he's crashing and bouncing back to you which is what he's gonna do um because then he'll have prior for the scuttle crab but honestly, if he lets the slow push, he probably still will have proper scuttle crab because you're just so low HP, you're not gonna be able to fight it, but you're gonna be able to crash it at that point. So I think it's totally fine too if he just decides to crash this one and then but as long as the next one he's trying to let it come out. But he should then at least be really trying to crash this one so the next one will bounce around scuttle crab. Um now I think I think after this really rough start, you start to really respect them a lot more, yeah. and you put a lot of distance. But the problem is now it comes at the price of uh, losing quite a bit of CS yeah. under turret because you're so low that you actually can't even really walk up on your turret very well. So if you're full HP when he's crashed like wave two, for example, if we didn't get poke sword, he'd probably play the exact same way, right? This is kind of the default in this rank is just to push a lot. Mm -hmm. um, He'd probably play this exact same way, and we're full HP at this point, and they're on our tower. We have actually a lot of potential to, to go for a kill on them with Seraphine having a root. Uh -huh. um, and I would also recommend taking W, just because your your E's not very strong in terms of like it's it's a damage ability. Um, you're going to be way better off in trades with press the attack with QW than you are with QE. With Comet build, you like E because you're just poking. Mm -hmm. And you get that comet proc, and the slow one to comet is like guaranteed comet land. But if you have Prissy attack, you usually just want WQ level two because your trade will be a lot, lot stronger. And you can fight for wave prowl a little bit better. Um. So well, at this point, you start playing a little bit better with the lane here, respecting him a little more. And now Lucian could just be playing a lot slower, but he's still coming into you. How does he? Yeah, you get a really nice Q on him, gets him hit down a little bit. That's all you're looking for with misfortune, mm -hmm. really. Eventually they'll mess up and you'll get a juicy Q through them. <clears throat> yep, we see Echo down here and <laughs> Seraphine does not see him. <laughs> That's for sure. So she flashes. I was, yeah, it's fine. She flashes. We didn't have to heal. So I'd probably rather have her flash than my heal, but maybe not on this helo because I don't know what she's going to do. I'd probably rather play her for myself than my <laughs> own heal here. So I'm probably pretty happy she flashed, actually. So that you can still play with your heal. Yeah, so like just under the turret, what you could be doing for minions is just, you know, use that W. Mm -hmm. W attack speed. Like if you W right now, you could probably get two autos on this one. Um, maybe one auto even kills with your passive. I think one auto will kill this one at level four. Um, but your W lets you hit this one, hit this one, hit this one, and then you'll be able to maybe hit that one under the, under the last one pretty well or if there's a mini that you need to auto attack twice really quickly your w does really well with that too pretty good a little bit a little bit slow on the word but uh, i'm not complaining still a good kill and then you get not me too what happened i don't remember what happens oh yeah you i just eat the bubble that is Got to space that bubble a little bit, huh? Mm -hmm. That's okay, though. Oh, Aerie is what took you down, too. The fat auto. I didn't <laughs> yeah. I get it with that auto. That was like all 102 damage I got. I'm trying to look at this. Yeah, I like that. That's a good play. Hmm. Where she ends, oh, okay okay so, this yeah. is yes yes so this is slow pushing in so you you honestly don't you know even though echo did just gank you in this rank he i i just you can never trust their pathing very much mm -hmm. down here so I, if, if this was slow pushing in i'm a little bit scared that echo might come so you know just play for slow crash play distance don't try to force too hard i think you're doing a good job of like pressuring him right now and then nami walks in really stupidly and we get damaged <laughs> so already she's putting too much space like this is just back out of the straight really good already you don't have anything to follow up like you don't have your yeah if you're mm -hmm. easy maybe we can wave some more ability to go because we know she doesn't have flash for that first fight but yeah. everything's down don't chase too hard just come back and start getting the minions and play for slow push again or maybe if you had like a w but honestly the minion aggro will take your w down really quick so we probably won't get that move speed even <clears throat> which i know we did back off straight so we did we did a good job but now so now what we want to look for right now while this, these waves are coming to meet, this is a really good time for you to just come get a ward down. While these, while your wave's walking up. Because we're not really, like, you're, you're not really in a rush to sh crash this right now or anything. 
what we're more worried about is that there could be a gank because we're about to be overexcited. So after this trade and this wave is when like this wave is, you know, we look at the map, we see this wave coming in, so we know there's coming out of turret right now. Instead of just rushing up to the next wave, just like crash, we don't have any ward coverage right here. We even see Echo right here on the map mm -hmm. for a quick second. Yeah. This this is usually a good time when these waves are like gonna move up or fresh waves coming in. Even if it's like your wave's so big that it's slow pushing really hard and there you might miss one melee or something, it's still a really good time to just come get a little ward out somewhere up in the river. Um, even if you know a good ward could just be a little bit past the bush, just in the river, depending on who the jungler is. If you're worried about Echo like tumbling over the wall into the bush, you know, end of the bush is pretty good. But it's a really good time because we don't even know if like if we do come to shove this next wave where we're gonna be a little bit past the lane right now. It's you know we're not safe to do it. Mm -hmm. So just giving this coverage is a lot better that we just sacrifice. And right now you won't even lose any minions. But even in a case where you will lose one melee or so, it's pretty good okay. to use this time right now to go get a ward out because if you don't get the ward out and you go to shove this and you get ganked, you're gonna miss a lot more than that one minion that you would have lost otherwise. Now if you see Echo top or something or you saw him on a ward right here just five seconds ago, you're probably safe to not ward right. Mm -hmm. But if we don't know where he is. Um, or especially if we do see him in the box of the map, <laughs> just take take the time to, to ward because that is going to cover you a lot. And also, if Nami gets into a bad spot, we're gonna be very safe to kill her because we are aware if Echo is behind us or not, and we can actually react to this. Um, so we can play a lot more aggressive, even just with this ward now, and we don't have to just necessarily crash and like run away to ward. We can actually crash and pressure Nami because we have this ward already. Now, if it's, you know, certain junglers might require a little bit more coverage than just right here. Like a Hecarim who's level 6 can speed turbo yeah. speed behind you, so like this doesn't always save you, but at least you, like if you have flash up or something, you can react to it a lot easier just with a shallow ward. And when you're going to be crashing a wave right here, this ward's pretty good because you're not all the way up here, where he's going to be like behind you quickly, right? Like, we can be playing, we can play towards the bottom side of this lane now with this warded, and then if someone does come, we can just run through these bushes, and it's going to be hard for their bot lane to like catch up with them. But, moral of the lesson right here is just, okay, wave is going to crash. I know I'm going to be overextended soon. Ward. If you know you're going to be overextending, ward. If you don't know where enemy jungler's at. This is why Wukong was like spamming you guys, because we just saw Echo right there, and then you guys still like <laughs> disregarded it um but so what you want to do now is like um so other than the ward as we know that seraphine's got her like with the, these procs up no matter who it is like you know if this is leona or whoever has the cc you know that they have cc right right now we okay. know that seraphine has our her e with our e combo especially but even if we're not mf seraphine has with this little like three bar thing that means she has her like double note thing up Right, yeah. which means that she has the root note um, as is. So Nami is super low. I could, if Nami's playing really far back, I could, you know, me and Seraphine together, if we're if we're standing in a good spot together, we could look for a short trade onto Lucian if Nami's not in range. Perfect. But Seraphine needs to be next to me for me to do that. I can't just like just because Nami's is slow doesn't mean I can just look to like go for a trade on Lucian by myself because then I'm just gonna get. I'm basically just even trading, and then I'll get low, and he'll she'll get low. Or her, you know, we'll both lose half our HP. Whatever, whoever wins the trade, I think um, in a short trade here, Lucian will actually do a little bit more damage than you, especially when he has Nami's E to buff him. With a, that's a lot of damage, and then Nami's heal is a little bit more prominent than Seraphine's heal. Um, but if I'm gonna hit Lucian, I want Seraphine to be like really close to me, so that we can both hit him. So if and it's assuming Nami's not in range, but because Nami's so low. What I'm trying, what I really want to look for is I want to look for Seraphine to be in a spot where, okay, Nami walks up too far. I can E Nami and Seraphine can hopefully E her too. Or if this is a Nautilus, I actually just want to like look for Nami to be in a spot where I can E Nami and then that person can get the hook on them and engage. Because Nami's just such an easy target now. If Nami's playing, again, if Nami's playing really, really far back and Lucian puts himself in a spot where he could get hooked or CC'd or whatever, then I can obviously go for the look on Lucian. But I'm not trying to like pressure Lucian too hard by myself because I'll still. He'll still be able to trade with me even with Nami this low because Nami can just support him with an E or a W. So I, if I want to hit Lucian, it needs to be Nami's too far away, and it needs my I need my support still by me. If Lucian's half HP and you're both full HP, you can probably That's look for a little bit of trade yeah. on to Lucian, right? Yeah, and you've got your two refill pots too. So, like, so what happens right here 
is your position is actually like not amazing because you could be hit by both these both people and it's like actually nami's closer to you than lucian and we just like eat at lucian and now seraphine's looking at it like it doesn't nami's hp being low doesn't really mean that much right now if we're hitting lucian because okay. she's, she's almost like full hp because we're not gonna hit her anyways yeah. right so this trade just kind of becomes a little bit different so then if we would have targeted nami from the get-go yeah so like look at the end of this trade whoa we're so low yeah why because even though nami started low she's still the same hp because she didn't even get hit yeah and we're also walking into their whole mini wave um so like right now if if, if nami's playing so far back if i want to hit lucian i should probably come down like closer to seraphine where Nami can't do anything. And then again, me and Seraphine can hit this guy together, and Nami can't just, like, hit me. And I, again, I, even though Nami's low, she still has supporting abilities with her, like, E damage and her heal being ranged and being able to, like, you know, she can W Lucian, that W bounces to you. Mm -hmm. So she's still actually able to do stuff. It's like, we're, we're running at Lucian, but Nami's actually able to just totally hit you, and then the Q goes on Nami, and then some autos here, but it just doesn't really do that much. So it feels like you should hard win this because Nami's so low, but she's not taking very much aggro. So that's why, like, if, if we're going to go for a trend illusion, it needs to be where, like, we're just doing a short trade on Lucian, and then we're going to, like, refill pot up. We can't really just all in on Lucian just because Nami's super low, because especially inside of a minion wave. Minion waves do a fucking lot of damage. A lot, <laughs> a lot of damage. Like, if all six of them are hitting you, every second you're taking, like, like 60 damage from minions. Like, per second. Maybe more like 50. You're taking a lot, but that's a lot. That adds up. That's yeah. 150 damage from minions in three seconds. And even if you're just short trading on Lucian, if you're coming all the way up here to hit him one, two, three times, and you walk away, these things will probably hit you three or four times each. And that's like 200 damage. Add that in terms of a short trade, that, that's a lot. So what I'd like to look for here is either one, Lucian steps up really far into my wave. Well, that's when I'll hit him. Or two, Seraphine's up here with me. Nami walks up too far. I E her, and then Seraphine follows up, and then we're able to just like kill her really quickly. I don't really want to look to run into their wave to hit them, though. I still what, what I should just do now if I'm trying to either one if I'm trying to crash, just get this in and go for a recall. I don't think you really need to do that right now. You could just still play for like pressure this Lucian off the wave, wait for your wave to come in, shove it in, and then we have priority to maybe do dragon or something with fiddlesticks. Or because Nami's so low, if I'd already got this war down, maybe I can just bully under tower harder. Like, I, you know, me alone can't do much. But if I'm standing next to Seraphine and Seraphine's right here, Seraphine can just spam QEs at them, at them under tower. And that's going to hurt them. Kind of what Nami did to you under tower, right? Mm -hmm. Or what Lucian's Q was doing to you. So it's just a little bit of poke, but you're still the dip. But we can't really pressure under tower unless we have this war down. So we can kind of zone Lucian off this wave. If they mess up, we can hit them, right? But we don't want to walk into the wave to do it. You know, but um, okay. if anything, next wave comes in. If they don't come up to us, we crash that wave and we bully them on a tower with this ward mm -hmm. that we had put because we know we're about to overextend and we had a little bit of time. Like right, right when you're killing this wave off. Even like right now, if I, if I feel like I'm going to overextend, I could just drop out and ward real quick and then come back. I maybe miss a caster minion. Not a big deal. So I miss a lot more if I am overextended and get ganked. So actually, I wonder, do you open the death recap here? I wonder how much damage minions did. I don't think we do. If we click this and we looked at how much damage minions did, I bet it'd be a lot. Yeah. But, yeah, re really, like, so the kill, the kill that would come out here would just be you're slow into Seraphine's combo on Anami if Nami missteps. Or it could be Lucian coming up too far, you slow, she roots Lucian, and then... Um, I would try to position a spot where Nami's not be able to like really just walk at me uh, or support too much, and I would just go short trade with that CC from Seraphine and get out. Take that advantage so that when I crash that next wave, I'm able to bully harder in the tower. So I even think like necessarily this trade's not even super terrible. Like at the beginning, we we come in. I think it's better if like so right now if we came at this angle where Nami's put distance mm -hmm. between us so that she can't just W us, um, unless. So if you're Lucian right now, you'd feel pretty comfortable like dashing at Nami and just executing her. Yeah. But you don't have that MF. You don't have that dash into a range stuff. Um, mm -hmm. think maybe we drop this on Lucian. We come outside the wave instead of coming into the middle of the wave. And make come out of this angle. And then maybe we'll be able to just hit Lucian next to Seraphine and then yeah, kind of duck Seraphine. out. Okay. 
okay. yeah, and duck out real quick. So That's like, even right now, I think you guys have won this trade until you go for this auto. Because he's going to be unrooted and he's going to get a full combo out on you now. And it'd be better, right, if we don't use that Q on Nami since it's not going to kill her and she's going to put space. So like, you can see it right here. This E is not bad. We probably just want to like, okay, Seraphine's walking up. I, I'd prefer if like from the start, I'm kind of just where Seraphine's going to be able to hit him from. Um, I don't really want to go for anything until Seraphine's kind of close to me. So like Seraphine's not in the spot to be able to follow up right now. Now she's getting closer. And now I'm going to go for this E, but maybe I want to start stepping this way, then mm -hmm. E when he like walks in. And then now I'm at an angle where I can run at him with Seraphine. She roots. We can maybe just Q auto, auto Q auto him with a press attack. Maybe you can just auto Q. Maybe we don't want to get the press attack. But if we just hit him right here before, if we got this auto up before he was going to be unrooted and just turn out, it'd probably be pretty decent. And if we're down here, this wave's not blocking me from getting out too. Because you're also already probably about to get unit blocked. Because we've run through the wave. Why can't I click this? Yeah, see, it kind of pushes you like, eh, yeah. I mean, we're clicking this way too, but he'd be forced that way either way. Anyways, so the look on this trade is pretty good, the idea of it, but vision is first priority before we try to do this anyways. And then, again, unless you saw Echo Top or something, um, and then thinking about, you know, I, I'm putting myself, what you're doing right now is you're putting yourself kind of in a triangle on them where it's easy for them both to hit you, um, and Seraphine's kind of far away. And Lucian, like, you could be like, oh, well, there's kind of a triangle for me and Seraphine onto Lucian. But the problem is, Lucian can just dash away. Yeah. If he really wants to. So, a good look at the trade, but remember, like, our, our, our priority here is to just be, like, a short trade. We're not really trying to evenly trade our HP with Lucian right now when you know i'm just going to be vulnerable especially overextended be in a spot where let you know kind of let seraphine be the determinant of if you're going to like actually be able to go into the trade or not since lucian has really high damage output and just use this e for the hopefully seraphine follows up here and hopefully i'm in a spot you know where i'm outside the wave and then me and seraphine can hit together and then just duck out really quickly before lucian can really do any return damage just like even if it's just like one auto like even if that was just auto q on lucian or just just the q on lucian and then you just back off. Before. Like, he's rooted right now, so you're, like, tempted to go in and hit him. We're already taking all his minions, and he's about to be unrooted. So yeah. if that auto came out, this key was on Lucian or something, and we just got out, we'd probably be in a pretty good spot where Lucian would be down to, like, this much HP. After the end of what Seraphine's about to do. And then we'd still be pretty healthy here, and we'd be out. And if we're in an even better spot over here, those minions don't also put us low. But enough about this play. <laughs> But yeah, just r try to consider for wards. When do I ward? Well, whenever you think you're going to be the spot where you're going to be kind of vulnerable. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> just wanted that one more auto. Your Q is really good. And then you E. Oh, we're just running into it. Try to just take a step up. Yeah, one more auto definitely kills at this point. But So th I think you could even keep chasing him. Um, Lucian's calling actually doesn't stop your W for some reason. But what stops your W here is, well, actually, maybe the first shot of it will stop it, and then the rest of them won't. Of them won't. But either way, minions are stopping it right now. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he starts calling you, because you've lost W and you don't have really much, very much move speed, you have to just step out of his ulti first. And a really good way to do it actually could be to go down, like click down here, and then click up really quick. Because usually when you click down, he'll move down. And then if you're really quick to move up, he's not going to react to you moving up in time. And then you're just already going to be like ahead of it. That's a really good way to juke Lucian R is to like run down and like just wiggle like down and then move up real quick. Because they'll try to just react to you moving down. Gotcha. Um, yeah, this Q is really, really nice coming into lane. I don't think the play overall is like a really bad look. It's just that you, keep, you just face tank the whole goal. <laughs> <I could get laughs> That's the, the problem. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Let lesson learned here, right? <laughs> yeah, fucking, one shots, don't bro. face tank the cooling. First oh, first priority is is move. Cause if, if you are way. at the angle where you get up here and he's like running this way on you, like you're always gonna be able to cut him off. Yeah, you'll always be able to cut him off. I don't know if Nami might come in and save him at the very towards the very end though. Yeah, that was that that puts you in a really bad spot now after after we'd already died like on this overextend without the vision. Um, and done this kind of really over aggressive trade into into this calling like that. Now you put yourself really, really yeah. far behind. 
Um, so we come back to the land, we have the slow push, He the next wave comes in, you crash this, and then you go to ward, which is totally good, right? Um, try not to ward right at the edge of this wall, because you kind of, like, yeah. this little crevice tends to block vision sometimes. It might just be better if you can, like, get it right above it in the open area, or even just, like, right here, where it might see a little bit further up this way. Um, or, again, like, if I'm against Hecarim, I always pop this, too. Um, depending on who you're against, you could just... A good ward is even just, like, right in the center right here. Um, if you plop this Blast Cone and they have Hecarim, Hecarim can't jump over this wall. So a, a deeper ward right here, where you'll see him, like, coming this way or coming through here, will be a lot more valuable, because you, you need more time to react to, like, Hecarim. Echo could always eat over this wall, so this ward's pretty good. But, you know, putting it here is generally good because then you can see him if he just decides to come through this way instead of, like, coming eating over the wall. Because if he does eat over the wall, he now doesn't have um, his E for, like, eight seconds, and he kind of just has to sit in the bush and wait for it. But the purpose of, like, buying pink wards is usually, like, okay, I'm, I'm going to... If, if I'm trying to, like, really pressure them or something, I can get this deep ward with my normal ward, and then I can come just, like, shallow ward with a pink ward that this one I'm actually going to be able to defend. I'm going to be able to defend that pink ward then. Or, obviously, if your jungler's coming in, you can pink ward in the lane. I don't think buying pink wards is necessarily a priority for you right now, though. Um, I think you play the rest of the lane pretty, pretty fine. Uh, we just... We're, we're behind, so we have to like play we like play behind pretty well. <laughs> yeah, we, but we play buffer and behind pretty well from this point. Um, Minecraft is coming. Yeah, up. It, it happens. It it happens occasionally. <laughs> yeah. So you, you you but the rest of the lane of what you're trying to do with like CC supports as MF is like if they overstep like you know if if you what you're looking for to use your E is like if if I'm here my support starts walking up and Lucian stays I can like I'm just using it for a slow for my support to be able to follow up. So like that that's kind of what we're trying to use our E on MF for at this point. Like Nami's walking up here and Lucian's really far away. This could be a good time to drop E. Got yeah. Like depending on you know, my support's Nautilus, Leona, anybody who can engage, they're gonna be able to catch up to Nami now and get in range of that. And also the slow makes it hard for them to dodge it. So if Seraphine like has her E or her R right now, and we slowed Nami, this is a really good time for Seraphine to then like mm -hmm. follow up because Lucian's really far away. If Lucian's yeah. like right here, the maybe triangle I'll look for the E on Lucian in or Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think Seraphine does R pretty soon. Yeah, I it Minecraft, so I just restart the stream and it usually fixes it, which is nice. Yeah, so it's finally Seraphine does just go for the R. Do we E first? No, but she just goes for the R. And then you drop the ER. Fantastic. Woohoo. Free kill. <laughs> I like it. Oh, then you can just threaten the freeze for a bit here. So if he does recall, all you do is just like wait for the next wave and then shove it because he's gonna miss that whole next wave now. And you could also be looking at the fact that you have you need twenty one hundred for your item and you're really close to that, so you might just want to like. Well, let's play say he was like low though. Away for that. Then it changes, right? Then we want to keep him here because either way he's gonna yeah, try to back. Yeah, yeah. Because if you keep him here, then and you crash, you can try to like kill him under turret or especially like jungler comes or something. Okay. And we might want to hold this here even too until the next wave comes in so that we're not going to be overextended pushing the next one in. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like if we, if we instead of like just default autoing these minions right now, if we just play it slow, we can wait for that next wave to meet up a little bit. Probably push by then, but maybe maybe the next wave, the, middle, the next two waves yeah. meet right here instead of like over here where we're overextended pushing because it's going to be a lot easier to crash then, right? Now, now we're crashing from past the, a little bit past the river, so it's a little bit harder too safely push it but you guys are like full hp so it's not as um important in this case because it's gonna be hard to die to a gank but if you do get ganked it's gonna stop you from crashing this now i'll be forced to leave i just wait for the kraken now we're pretty pretty dang strong so like right here we know that where is it coming in right now this new wave's coming in we know it's slow pushing mm -hmm. right and lucian has not recalled yet right so he's gonna crash this wave and we can assume he's no man he's recalling right now right 100 percent. this guy's recalling right now mm -hmm. i mean if he doesn't he has no mana he's trolling there's no <laughs> way he can fight you um so because we know that he's gone right now that means there's very little threat to you so what can we do now that we know that it's slow pushing into that 
and Lucian's not in the lane, which means we're pretty safe. We could ward. Yeah, we could think about a ward timing right now. We don't have a ward up, but it's going to be up in like 12 seconds. Mm -hmm. And Lucian's, you know, just think, okay, my, my ward's going to be up. I want to probably be ready to drop that down. Or if, like right now, if you do have your ward up, it's a really good time to go put that down. So like even right now, by the time we like walk up towards the scuttle area, our ward's probably going to be up. Mm -hmm. So we can just ward scuttle since it's coming up, and then we'll see if Echo's doing scuttle, and then we'll know he's bot side. But we could even just be aware of like, okay, I'm going to be overextending on... A, a, like a wave or two from now, I'm gonna need to crash, right? You could probably slow push the net. You could probably wait. You don't need to crash in the next wave, but the one after that, you're gonna have to crash if the enemy team doesn't like do anything. But so there's Echo, even. Look at that. I think Seraphine put that word down for us, which is very nice of her. She did. And Echo was already looking for us. Mm -hmm. and that's why, just because before we wanna, we wanna get that word preemptively down, usually before we are gonna be overextending. And I think we couldn't walk up to really help this because we knew Echo was bot side right now. Which is fine. Yeah. Lucian Nami has like really, really strong just like all in potential. Mm -hmm. The fucking Nami Eon Lucian is so strong. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> Should I just let this die? I kind of tried to defend it and then. So I actually really trade. think what you did from the start here was really good. The, you started this out like perfectly fine. Like this is really like, so when you walk up here and you look to get this auto on Lucian and then you, you, I think, what is this? Is this Nami's W? I think it's Nami's W. Now he's in the bush. Nami's right here. Pit. We could look to like E Nami. But we don't want to like walk into his colon, which we have to keep in mind. Because if mm -hmm. if we walk this way, we're in an open spot, and it's hard for us to like get back into our minions. We kind of want to play by our minions now. So if he does call us, he, he like, you know, we can walk into the wave. And we don't have much force for now. So if anything, we just e Nami, and maybe Seraphine ults Nami, and then we can kill Nami for free right now. If Seraphine ults Nami, Nami's gonna die. I don't know why she doesn't. To be honest, could maybe we e her? Maybe Seraphine gets a double e off, and we get a stun, and we kill Nami. But 100% right now, Lucian's out of this vision. If we walk into him, we're walking into threat of the culling. So fuck Lucian. Let's hit Nami. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Let, let's hit Nami and let's play more inside our wave where Lucian can't cull us. Because I, I would probably like, if I'm Lucian right now, I am sitting here and I'm like, oh boy, please take this step up because I'm ready to cull you, and that's gonna hurt you. So which is exactly what happens, right? Boom, we're getting cold now, and <laughs> that hurt. Mm -hmm. But if we just go on Nami, it's pretty free because Lucian's already like out, out com completely out of out of range. So he yeah. can dash back in, but if we hit Nami and move away from him, he can't dash into range of me now, and yeah. he can't call me now, because I'll just duck back away. Right so Nami, Nami, this is a good, another good time, really good time, just go on Nami. And if we start going on Nami and we slow her and we auto her and then Lucian dashes in, now we can like go back onto Lucian potentially, and maybe Seraphine holds Lucian. But if Nami just holds not, or Seraphine just holds Nami right now, Nami's gonna be pretty easy to kill. And actually, Seraphine looks like she did go for the. E. The double E. I don't know if she missed it or what what you want to find. It's like E right now on Nami would be so strong. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, she does. Lucian so does. Miss, barely misses. I wonder if the that's E would so have skinny. influenced that, but that's still not necessarily like it's not your fault. We, it's missed or anything, but could have uh helped the situation. And now you see the this, problems happening again. We're being really, really greedy now. We see this guy coming in, we're still aiming at this person. So what, even if we kill Nami right now, We're this dead. guy's killing us. Yeah. Yeah. And also a problem is we still have both our refills. Always, you know, as soon as you start fighting, you just pop those refills. Get that habit going. Because, like, that shit was, that, it's OP. Having it, you have 100, <laughs> extra 150 HP. That's OP. But this is, like, yeah. So Nami would be really good right now. We have cold, which we could just kind of predict coming. So it's good that we, you know, go, he, he flashes away. Cool. This is really good right now that you're going on Nami. This is great. Well, we're probably going to hit Nami and move up this way because we're putting more space between Lucian and ourselves then. But as soon as this guy gets in range, if we haven't killed Nami like right now, uh-oh, mm -hmm. I don't want to get dashed on. If I'm full HP still, I might care less. But I'm in range like, I, I think you played some Lucian. I actually think I saw on your Twitter that you put some Lucian clips up. You know <laughs> Lucian with Kraken Slayer is going to kill you in one full like dash auto Q auto. Like, you're dead. Yeah. So it was, it was, pr it was really good. Oh, well, except for like the start of it. <laughs> starts off, starts off really good. Get a little bit greedy chasing Lucian and letting him call us. 
would have been perfect if we hit Nami. This is perfect. He's forced away. Nami's got there's space between us and Lucian. Well, Nami's in range. We could just hit Nami a little bit and you know again kite away from Lucian, where he has to dash at us to, to hit us, um, and comes into which means his dash is enough for Seraphine. So obviously we know this is a bit of a mistake. Ulti ends up now we turn it around a little bit. We've, we've the ult is good because it forces Lucian away, and then this is really good turning on the Nami again, even though we already butchered a little bit. But now it's like okay, Lucian comes up. We knew he was coming up. We have to leave again, right? Mm -hmm. Similar to last time, it's like the fiddlesticks, right? We we know we want that auto on Samira, but fiddlesticks is coming to slap us. Okay. So unless we know that we can kill Nami without dying here, <laughs> it's not worth it's not worth to kill Nami and die to Lucian because now Lucian's gonna get this whole wave, and the next one you're gonna miss it all. So you realize, gotta kill on Nami. You referenced you an early an earlier game. In the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Samira Fiddles game. I remember that. <laughs> um but if you trade one for one where you die to kill Nami and Lucian kills you, it's not worth. Mm -hmm. It's almost never worth it. The only time it's worth it is if like you're dead no matter what. Um I mean, it's not necessarily worth it, but it is like making the best case scenario out of it because you're going to miss at wave, wave, and he's going to get wave, wave, and just be like, that's why he becomes two levels ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And then actually Morgana's on our way too. But Okay, that's something I've never done, really thought about is the whole like keeping distance. Yeah, distance is everything idea. for you, especially team fights. Mm -hmm. Like but, I've thought yeah, of, so like in terms of team fight, but like not like I, like I don't yeah. adapt, I don't adjust or like change who i'm distancing from very yeah. much in like, it's a, like a tunnel it's vision like, obviously he yeah yeah for real and if you could break that it's like huge stuff as ad carry because a lot of ad carry is just threat like managing threats yeah um and in the early phase stages of the game or you know throughout the whole game like threats change very quickly so like right now there's no threats here so you're just like oh but then this guy's coming in range so it's like threats changing threat, yeah. i have to walk away but again, like if I'm full HP and Lucian's maybe really low and I'm not afraid of him actually killing me here when I kill Nami or if I turn on him if he comes into me, I can I can be a little bit more aggressive here. But I'm so low and I don't have summoners and this guy's coming in. I have to just respect this and turn away. So like the biggest point of it though is like I don't think right here you'll be able to kill like Lucian at this point or anything if he comes into you, like you're too low. But the biggest point is just like this whole point. It's like Lucian already got away. You're in range at Nami. You can just drop the slow on Nami. You and Seraphine can pop Nami really quick. And you just walk away, kite away from Lucian, but still in range of Nami. I think we talked about last time, kind of like the curve movement instead of like yeah. running straight up, right? Yeah. Similar to the time right here, I can curve towards Nami where it's putting me, you know, more distance between me and Lucian. If if I know he's around here. Um, and I also know a threat is the culling and I'm walking out of the wave here. But if I just kind of go for Nami and then if if Nami's like forced away, if we don't kill Nami for whatever reason, if Seraphine like decides not to ult her or something, then if Lucian wants to come and like make up for this fight, he's forced to like dash in to get in range now. And then if he dashes in, it makes it easy for Seraphine to ulti. And now I can just switch back onto Lucian. But I don't want to like force myself into no vision calling big damage to like try to get this off. I need to just play for who I can hit safely um, and change targets if it's necessary. <laughs> But is it? I hopefully this like just I know I'm watching this over and over at this point. But I think these are like the two biggest points. Of these games, the games were yeah. like the, the times where we were just overstepping our boundaries and really getting aggressive. Because you again, we we like those just small victories that set us up. Because if we if we even just like kill Nami here and then we have this Rift Hill with us, so cool. If, even if we don't kill them, we're just like this trade is forcing them off the wave, which is going to force our Rift Hill further up the lane, which is going to make it easier for, easier for us to you know. Obviously, we're going to get big turret gold off that. The Rift Herald is really bad, by the way. I mean, but you got to make the best of what you have with this. I don't know well, why think, we have Rift well, coming in bot right now, but... I think he was trying to use his Scarecrow because they just <laughs> yeah, played, they just placed I a pink. I hope so. You can see him. Oh, pink is in there. Or? Nope. <laughs> I, yeah, I've got no clue. Like, the trinket wouldn't even matter because yeah. it's a pink word anyway, but... Yeah, um... So I think we've exhausted that part. So really try to try to just try to practice this stuff, right? Who's yeah. who's in range and not walking into like because again, if, if we're going for this Lucian, now we're coming into Lucian and Nami. But when Lucian's already gone, Nami's in range. It's 1v2. Yeah. Take that 1v2. Lucian, you want to make it not a 1v2? Come into us. I want you to come into me. MF does not do very good at chasing people. She doesn't have a lot of tools. Like you gotta slow, but like you're just purely pretty much auto attack based. 
auto people who have only auto attacks don't really like to walk into the kiting yeah. unless you've already won it you like people coming into you because you can just turn your attack speed on and passive blast them real quick you don't really like to run into people especially like in team fights for mf running into people is what you do like when you've already kind of won the fight or when you're like super super strong that you know you can just pop that person but usually you're waiting for like mf you're waiting for the fight to begin and then you're okay saying hey guys what's up i'm here to do damage since you guys can't get on to me now. Yeah. So now we're, we're freezing this, which is, by the way, really good to do, um, even at this point in the game. You just have to kind of pay attention to like what's going on mid, because if, if you're seeing like a fight mid that you think you can affect from this point, it's really it, it's pretty good. But right now, like you don't have Seraphine or Wukong ulti, so what's the point of being mid for a fight? Like we're, We don't have ults. We don't even have our ulti. It's like, what are we going to do? What? I don't know why you're, and your team wants to fight this. So what I'd be doing... It's not always gonna work, but the best thing I could do here is like, oh, I'm just danger pinging them or like telling them just just farm it. Don't fight. Yeah. I don't know why they try to fight this. If Wu Kong and Seraphine have ulti, I'd probably think about just shoving this out and seeing that how many people are heads are in mid on the enemy team and it'd probably come mid because I think Fiddlesticks is gonna be able to force something. But no ulties on us three, I'd be like, why why would I bother? Mm -hmm. I just wanna get farm here. And then we end up getting a nice little kill here anyways. Cool. I'm happy. We got a lot of XP, a lot of gold and bot lane, and then we came in and got more. Cleaning up a little bit. And then, this is a really nice rotation too, by the way. So, because there's two people still alive, it was Morgana and it was Echo, right? Yes, Echo was low, but together, you're very squishy. <laughs> like, even if they're low, they can just jump on you very easily. So, I don't really feel safe walking past this point um, to get this turret. And the turret's also very healthy. It's like full HP still. That it's going to be hard for you to really even kill this turret as is. Um, if the turret's like 1 HP, maybe I'll be able to walk up and kill it. I feel comfortable doing so. But I don't know how much HP Morgana was. And even though we thought Echo was low, he might have like flashed out. Or he might he might be healthier than we thought. He might have smite, smite at a camp. He might have gotten a honey fruit in the river. There's a lot of things he could do to gain HP, right? Yeah. So I don't really want to overextend as MF without flash into Echo's potential W. And a Morgana who can walk up and bind me. It's too much risk there. But there's a there's a vein overextended, and I've already caught out. I've already pushed out mid. I've already gotten all the gold and XP that I feel like I can get in mid. So I can look for like going to a side lane, or I can, you know, well that's usually what you'll go to a side lane, or you look for like jungle camps, which we tend to start to do later in the game more so. Um, jungle camps are when you're like really really strong. Like if if you know that there's no way that Echo or whatever can contest you in the jungle camp, you can just walk in. Hey, what's up, Raptors? Cool, I'll take Raptors. Red buff, I'll take Red buff. And then you pay attention to depths timers and think about how long it could have been for them to re like recall and come back to their jungle because you don't want to get caught out obviously um just do it for as long as you feel safe doing it and that's kind of your reward for winning this kill in mid and getting some deaths is like oh cool i can get a little bit of extra gold and xp in the jungle that i can't get in mid lane um does that make sense was that too much right there <laughs> yeah i don't know if i did some overload <laughs> no but, i think i get it so, so what happens bot is i know that i i just know because we we finished by like kind of pushing up bot in a weird spot that and just looking at this wave it's a pretty big wave so it's actually slow pushing so mm -hmm. by the time you get bot the the thing to think about is like i could come finish pushing this out and that's kind of fixing the wave so that it's forcing this wave into their turret and so that their team's going to lose this wave potentially if nobody gets there in time but there's also a vein just pushing top while your team is running out of base and you have a slow might as well just run top go for a kill here yeah this vein is top laners in this elo just they're just always doing this shit they're always <laughs> overextending like i don't know why she's still here if she wasn't here i would probably go fix out fix bot wave right because you can see it's kind of stuck down here for a while but vein is like an immediate vicinity so as soon as you finish pushing this wave out i just start running towards vein which is what we do right i think eh, maybe we do a little bit clicking around thinking about what we're doing and then now we move now we moved top. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> took took a little bit. But it, it, we're going to get there about the same time as Fiddle Six, especially if we moved a little bit sooner. Um, so he's got to wait for us a little bit now. But yeah, we I mean, we can just cut her off, right? Some Wukong comes this way. She's, she's dead. And that's going to lead us to actually be able to get a lot more for a little bit because Rift Herald's up. Mm -hmm. And so now, a Recall would be fine too if your team's not looking for Rift Herald, but um seraphine checked and they saw that any team is doing rift held um otherwise if your team wants to rift held, just support them here because it's a 5v4 so even though you have a lot of gold we're probably gonna win this because you're also really healthy yeah um so we're using vane's death timer to get a little bit of an objective here uh, otherwise you know if if maybe 
if maybe we kill Vayne and like the rest of your team is not in this area and Rift Shell doesn't look possible, uh, we could probably help push out top and then we could recall. Or if we see enemies pushing mid, we could just come catch this wave on our mid tower, clear it, recall, or we could just recall and move afterwards. There's a little bit of options, but always just looking like, hey, where's there, where's there some immediate value? Mord's going to push top. Cool. I'll let him do that. I'll recall if I'm not going to do Rift Shell. Good that we stopped the reset though when we saw that the enemy team's doing Rift Turtle. Enemy team's trolling doing Rift Turtle right now. Their vein is dead. It's a 5v4. I don't know why they would try to do Rift Turtle. <clears throat> you steal it. Easy, <laughs> easy clap. And now, cool, we got some value. And then the reason we can recover right now is because Wukong's probably just going to move mid. He can just catch the midwave and we can go spend our gold. I don't know if you felt the difference between Collector versus Assassin's Streamer, but man, Collector is just so nice. Alt, I think it's yeah, mainly the alties. The alties yeah. are oh, huge. Difference. If if you when you have serrated, so if you're like still in lane or something, when you get cr like Krakus there and you have your serrated Thurk, dude, if you get a Q that kills a minion <laughs> and hits them, it's like half their HP. It's just it's just dirty. It's nuts. Yep. So now we're just in mid. There's no other waves. Um, what happens here? Nothing's happening. Actually, our uh, yeah, team killed Echo. So if Wukong ulted, you were just ready to drop ER, which yeah. is good. Always safe path here. We don't want to walk into Lucian and Ami, just get popped. Unless, you know, if your team's... If Wukong is, like, walking first this way, and there's, like, Fiddlestick Seraphine with him, then you can follow up behind a little bit slower, right? But generally, rule is just safe path. Do we even need a kill out of this fiddles ulti? That was a wild fiddle ulti. <laughs> it's like dragons coming up. Why do you have to do that, man? Yeah. So when their team, when your team's not gonna contest dragon, clearly because the way they're moving, you just push this move out. What does, what happens now is enemy team is losing this wave. Yeah. For dragon, they'll at least lose a couple melees, and then you can like usually if you're fast about it, or if they're still on dragon, maybe if you feel like you have time to finish off this turret, do that. If the turret's still healthy enough that you're not gonna kill it in like two autos. We, this is a time that we could even if we're if we feel safe you know we see the whole enemy team on the map and bane is dead take the raptors yeah otherwise what we do is i think we just loop around the top side and we just uh eat our junk head. this is really nice to do enough by the way because your w um just makes it so easy. like your passive and w makes you take them so quickly 205 gold two for the <laughs> price of one right there that's a lot um shut about mid I think from here you're doing pretty well. Shove that mid. We're not going to be able to push anymore. Team's kind of in bot side, so we can look for raptors. Okay, so this is where we just get one turret, and then Echo's dead. But we don't have ultis anymore, so we don't want to like be caught overstaying. Because enemy team, like Morgana's just wave clearing mid. Are we really going to be able to do anything here? And we don't want to just sit here mid while they're going to wave clear and then just do nothing. So we just immediately instead just look for some extra value, which we get scuttle, and then we just finish pushing on top wave, which is good. Um, this is where we end up kind of overextending against Echo, I think. Just, But that's because we kind of assumed he was bot, which is our mistake. So here is like he jumps on you. You have yeah. to flash like right now. Whereas Q is going to come out. Because this is what this is what hurts you is that Q hits you. gets that three hit passive. And then at that point, by the way, at this point, there was no point flashing. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. But. um. Fine. Oh, did we not W? Oh, oh, big mistake. Oh, no. Gotta pop the W. Oh, I didn't reuse yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, at this point, it's still up. So, so what's really nice about MF, by the way, if you're doing one for 1v1s near, like, the wave, is even if you're not going to queue a minion to go through him, try to, like, so what you could do is he eat onto you, he's going to queue. So if I flash at, like, some sideways angle, because since I can assume that he's going to queue like this, right? Mm -hmm. It's gonna queue this way, so I want to probably flash this way or this way. I'd probably flash this way because otherwise you're flashing into this wave. If you flash down here, now there's minions behind him, so your Q will hit him, hit a minion. So you think that hitting the minions irrelevant, uh, but what it does is give you a reset yeah. of your passive on him as well as an extra W proc, yeah. like reset W proc. So hitting minions through them with your Q is actually really good because your okay. passive big, is big fucking brain. OP. Big and brain. the W is fucking OP. So, like, right there, if we're like, oh, okay, shit, my W's not up yet. Like, four seconds on it. If I could just, oh, boom, I'll just get a Q through him in the, like, flash to somewhere. Like, right now, he's going to Q there. I'm going to flash down here, auto Q him. It's going to hit a minion. I'm going to get my W back up. And I'm going to hit him with another passive proc. That's going to be really a lot, a lot of damage. Um, Baron. Can't do anything about it. 
team comes a dragon. I just want to stress that because our team is down here, we don't want to spend time like behind this wall or trying to enter this way. It's too split. We want to come behind these people. Okay. Very important. We don't want to be behind this wall looking for an ulti. We don't want to be over here looking for an ulti. We don't want to try to come this way. Unless we're confident that our team is ent like four of us are entering this way and someone is like flanking down here. That could be fine. Mm -hmm. But usually, you know, two people are already down here. I don't want to be over here with Seraphine. I don't want to be ulting behind this wall where my ult is hit or miss. I want to be somewhere like down here that I can actually follow up into the fight and still ulti from. And I'm behind them now. Because if I come from this way, it's very easy the enemy team just turns on us, right? Mm -hmm. If I mind this wall, like they can even just jump over the wall on us and these two are doomed over it. So I want to immediately try to position behind my front line. Come down right away. Let's see, we're kind of bouncing back there. Just come behind these people like ASAP. I think we end up just dying because Lucian comes on us by himself. I even thought like an ulti is good just right here, right now. I'd just ulti this way. Okay. Probably. Because they can't really like enter on you anymore. Like you're forcing them like to stay on the river. It's going to like stall for you a little bit. Like even right now, now, now dragon is done. They're just gonna run at you. But e even now, it could be like it's a little bit blind. But like this ulti right here could be pretty good. But like right as soon as you see them kind of grouped up and they're kind of like still running at your Wukong here, and he just dashed like this is really good timing too. Because they're they're looking to come onto these three right now. So your ulti, they cannot. They can like no longer like try to run into, the, into this fight. They have to back off, and you're probably mm -hmm. still gonna get some damage on them. And if they do keep coming in, which it looks like Lucian was pretty committed, and Morg's kind of like walking in, and so is Echo, they're gonna eat a lot of ulti damage. It's like Echo used his E. They're Nami ulting. They're coming in. I I would have just used the ulti. Got a good chunk of damage off. Because your ulti doesn't have to be like it doesn't have to hundred zero everybody. It, even if they stand in it for like a second, it's still a lot of damage. Obviously, it's ideal if you combo it or if uh, mm -hmm. you hit the whole thing, but that's just not always possible. Um... We're playing defense. I think this is all solid. Uh, so so this is what what I was doing. This like you have to go to Elder Trick, but like say this is just like their second or third dragon or something by chance. I know it's really late in the game, but just by chance. If this isn't like a game changing dragon right now, like Soul or Elder, or if it's just Soul and you can't fight anyways, look at how big all the waves in your base are. Mm -hmm. I, like this is a time where we just say fuck the dragon, get get the waves. But obviously this is Elder Dragon, you you have to fight that because if you don't, it's doomed. Mm -hmm. And then we end up coming in and getting a really nice combo. I think you play this fight well too. But just those side waves. Oh man, I'm just so sad when I see them that they're just going to die. Actually, I think we're still going to get quite a bit of them because we win this dragon fight. Oh, that was massive. <laughs> but like, but this kind of dragon, like if this is a normal dragon and we're what, what's happening, if, if, if this is like their third dragon after these side waves, if we lose this fight, we're losing all these. And this is so much value yeah. in these three waves right now so i'm just trying to put that in your mind you know think about sideways or op yeah ah, this fight shoot. was nasty though ah. okay sorry i am plugging my headphones <laughs> no worries yeah really really good positioning back here by your seraphine and wukong where they're gonna be able to you're just running able to get a nice ult off And we get a penta. Yeah, good pen. Even better. Makes it all worth it. <laughs> I mean, you won the game. It should have been worth it. Anyway. <laughs> True. So, like, you, I think you were two levels behind Lucian at the start of this fight. Yeah. He's level 16, I'm pretty sure. Where is he? Where are you, Lucian? Right yeah, there. he's 16. This fight, and then these waves, you're actually almost, you're halfway to 17. Like, the whole, my mm -hmm. god, dude. Massive. Yeah, but now we're just looking for value, playing mid. Is this the last fight of the game, I think? Uh -uh. No, it's not. This, fight, this game was this super one, long. This one just sets up for Baron. This was a really good sidestep. It's the strut. Oh, no, this isn't Baron. Mm, we do.
so we will by the way we would not want to take these jungle camps if we know that like baron is going to be rushed immediately and we're like you know maybe maybe if like you're low on hp or like really out of mana you would just probably want to reset right after this red buff or like pay a lot of attention to their death timers because we want to be probably like respawning or like in base at the same time as more like their um last death timer coming up so that we can match that person at baron gotcha so we're a little bit riskier, but I think you, these four items are so strong on you that it's not that big of a deal for you to like not have recalled yet. It'd obviously be better if we could spend the gold and just if we know that we have enough like rabbit shark in it, but you're already so strong. And I just kind of wanted to give you the example of like always aim to take the jungle camps because it's really mm -hmm. OP. That's your reward for, you know, that's that's the exit. We're exiting their base. If, if we don't have an immediate thing to be at, we always just try to get the uh, camps. Camps, yep. Yeah. Minecraft again. Fixed. <laughs> so what happened with our... Oh, that's why I didn't see the ulti. That's why I didn't know our ulti's down. I didn't even see this one. I think. I, yeah, I can't even tell that you ulted. <laughs> I, I could not even see. Um... <laughs> that was one auto. <laughs> this is not Wukong's damage right here. I just wanted... I love MF damage link game. Like Wukong does some, but she wins to what? <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, dude. Balanced. He's in GA. I was trying to flash so, over the wall so, right there. Would well, that have been a really, horrible idea? I, I don't think you would have needed to, but I don't think it would have been terrible because you're you're really strong in full HP. But you do have E for vision on this bush and blue trinket, so just consider that, even for this bush too. Um that's why I told you to eat this, is because I know that Lucian was like jing in it and Echo also we saw walk into it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so E gives you vision, but after you eat, you probably want to blue trinket because you're about to lose it again. Um, Jesus. I wonder if. Do I not heal? I don't know. Oh, he's caught on the Echo R. But we're still in a really good spot, so. Trying to look for poke with the rapid fire cannon whenever you can. Um, oh yeah, I, I was I was hoping for a good team fight to end the game, but Lucian, I like, it's not a bad idea what he's doing to back door, but the problem is he has no wave. Yeah. With him, like you see his wave down here. How is he? Yeah, he can't kill these turrets. Like, what is he trying to do? <laughs> Their turret is like one hit. Like, how, what? I'm pretty sure you guys just like tank it. Yeah. So <laughs> confident here, just keep <laughs> <behind> them, but, <laughs> but whatever. Um, anything you want to look at more from this one? Uh, uh, I think it was a pretty so... solid game. Started out a little bit rough, and then mm -hmm. really, I think your biggest enemy is just the over trading. Yeah, and like not this... looking for those, not just changing targets to like ensure that you're winning the trade. You're, you you like chase into the two v one because you're really like committed to hitting one person over the other. Um, I think that's actually just probably the, the, the biggest the problem biggest. that you have right right now. Um, and then just, you know, keep in mind the warding. If you know you're going to be over safe, you know you're going to be in a position mm, where you're, yeah. you're potentially threatened, just make sure you get a ward down. Even if it means missing a minion or two, get that ward down because you will miss a lot more minions when you die. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got. If you have any questions or anything you want to look at more in depth. I don't think so. I think that's pretty good on me. Warding. I mean, time, like, ward timing, I guess. And then, um, kind of like tunnel vision. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but yeah. A tunnel vision is pretty solid about it. Yeah, yeah. It, it is pretty much tunnel vision. Very tunneled on, like, oh, I'm trading onto this person, and you're like, it's and like everybody else switch. has just disappeared. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just everybody keep... else has disappeared from the screen. It's just a 1v1 now, but yeah. it's, it's not. It's not it's always those two people. Um, yeah, so just really stress that, man. Stress that out. Right. Is that hurting you a lot right now in terms <laughs> of like just the, the just the like even if you have a lose it a little bit, just walking up a little too far and going a little too ham. Yeah. Play to maintain that that lead. And even if you have a really big lead, um, depending on who your support is, right? Like if you can't always just force a, a fight that's going to be to the death. You still need to worry like get that. Even if it's like, what's great about MF is even if Seraphine's out of position, if you just get one Q through the wave onto Lucian, he's half HP. Great, mm -hmm. now it's really easy. <laughs> like, 
because of one Q because he fucked up and you just had a good position on it. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's Leona, you know, it's a little bit easier to like try to E and then she just all in combos. But uh, even if it is Leona and you're going on Nami, you still now again, maybe I need to worry about where's Lucian positioned because he might just be able to burst me really quickly, mm-hmm. even if even if we're full blasting Nami. So I might need to, you know, Leona engages and we're both in range. I might need to wait for Lucian to target Leona for just even a, like two auto attacks, like a dash auto queue before I start to walk into Nami. Because as soon as Lucian's combo is gone, like, great, I... He's not gonna kill me now, mm-hmm. but especially like the stuff like Colin. Don't walk into that shit. <laughs> you know, if, if it's MF, you don't want to be walking into that MF ulti either. But yeah. either. But just, just keep that space and just look at the support. Or you're gonna be able to hit easily now. And then you know, if it might change again pretty quickly, but we need to make sure we're actually changing. But, Alrighty. All right, dude. We're finally back at it. I took a. I guess it's only been probably like what a week. Well, not even. I think we we're scheduled for Monday. And... Oh no, you're well, right. I, I guess mean, it was since like the last a week. Yeah, since the last one's been a week. Yeah, it's been about a week, so it's not too bad. But I am. Yeah, I just got a lot going on, dude. Moving yeah, back in like good. three three weeks now or so. Rock on. Probably still gonna be doing these while I'm in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Rock on. Maybe a little bit. Catch some... but. It'll probably be fine. You'll catch some um, Korean solo queue, maybe. Oh, See how that dope. goes. That'll be fun. Yeah. Well, all right. Just keep in touch when you want to do the next one. We can get that scheduled, no problem. Rock but on. We'll do. Till then, dude. I'll talk to you later. For sure. See right. you. Have a good Peace. one. Peace. You too. All right. Day three done. Oh, boy. I got to write this down before I forget it. Remembering to I'll be uploading this straight to YouTube by the way guys Tunnel Vision In Boarding When Possible all right, but other than that's the end of the stream. I'll see y'all tomorrow at 8 a.m. No, I won't because I'll be at work at 8 a.m. I'll see y'all at the latest Monday, maybe this weekend. We'll see. Other than that, y'all have a great rest of your day. And bye-bye. Boink.